Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Seahorses. My name is Leslie Scallon. I am one of the co-founders of this festival. Um, I had the pleasure of seeing this film quite some time ago. That's why it's in this festival. Um, and now my favorite part is to bring down the writer, producer, director of Seahorses, Jason Cartalian. The film is about this man who meets this very mysterious woman on Craigslist and he gets way more than he bargains for and all hell breaks loose. And it's, it's this postmodern love story. This group is here with the film Seahorses. Tell us about your film's journey to Dances with Films. Oh, it was great. I'm actually an alumni. So my film, my first film premiered at Dances with Films in the year 2000. So it took 14 years, but I'm back. And things have changed. The location has changed. Was the carpet green back then? I don't think there even was a carpet back then. Not only that, I am so proud of our team here. We have, we have Justine Washberger. We have Ian Hutton. We have Roxy Shee. And uh, we made this incredible film called Seahorses. And I hope everyone gets to see it. Oh, and uh, can't wait. it's very special. Sure, everybody wants to know where did the idea come from? Was it a personal experience? Well, I, I actually write from the core, and um, I mean, actually, I, I was involved in like some kind of big budget thing, like with lots of producers and things like that, and it didn't go right. And I wanted to do something small, something that reminded me of like, let's say, art house of the 80s. I don't know, I don't know if you guys know Alan Rudolph, but personal stories. Um, you really get to learn about characters, you learn about people, and you learn about their lives. And it's great to see people respond positively to the film. And uh, I was having issues with my family, you know, health issues, and I started thinking about life and death. And, uh, you know, and, and through my characters, I was able to act out in certain ways. It started with me with a computer, writing a story, and then we got some amazing people involved in this film. Um, you know, Roxy helped me so much getting this crew together and, and with, her, with her persistence. And then, and then there was a beautiful um, a melding of talent with Ian and Justine and myself where we just made sure that there was sort of a, a level of trust between all of us so we could communicate the story as, 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 as powerfully as we could and bring what I'd written to another level. My mom's dying. Brother wants to finish her off. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm... I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I don't, I don't know what else to say, but I'm... Sorry. Sorry. Because we were able to really, really focus in on one location, we decided to really, really make that one location interesting. And we were able to do interesting things with the lighting. So even though this is a parlor piece between two people, we tried to make it as cinematic as possible. Did you end up doing a lot of um, pre-rehearsal with everybody, or was it like you just walked in and, and nailed it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just they just showed they up, laughing? and they just, <laughs> there was rehearsal, and in fact, we did some workshopping when it came to actually adjusting the script to the the actor's uh, background. The original f uh, script was not in French. In fact, uh, Justine did the translation. I don't know French. We actually sat in a in a room, and and we tried to find someone who who spoke Parisian French, and I was really. I mean, and again, we found Daniel. He. There was a lot of actors that said that they could speak French and they really couldn't. Like, a, I had an actor like, well, I can do it. I just, you know, I can get it down. And they just phonetically tried to speak some language that we never even understood what he was saying. <laughs> and then we also tailored Marty's part to some of Ian's background as well because he's from o Oklahoma. And, yeah! and, and so he mentions, like, he was in Shawnee. He mentions when he was a you know, sushi chef and there wasn't a lot of things around. So again, there, there was actually adjustment of the script to get certain beats, nuances, 
because this really is about people and we really wanted to try to make it a, a, a unique experience. Just one kiss. I won't do any harm. I'm sick, Marty. I'm super sick. So am I. Well, Jason was really great because we, I've done a few features and every director has said the same thing. Ian, we're really gonna go deep. We're gonna really get personal and we're gonna really dig into this character. And then we do like a table read and maybe one talk about the character and then we shoot. Jason was awesome because me and Justine and, and Jason met in his apartment twice a week for about two hours for around, around two months. Um, and Justine and I were like, oh, it's gonna be freaking flat by the time we actually film it. Um, but we just went through each scene so in depth that by the time we did f film it, we were prepared to go to where we needed to go and just hit it, hit it, hit it, um, and hit all the beats that we had found in rehearsal. What are you doing? I was gonna kiss you. Can I kiss you? I was chunkier before I did this. I had slimmed down a little bit. I did three weeks of juicing. <laughs> because Jason wanted me to lose some weight. And I remember one day we were filming and we were on, quote, lockdown of the set and they brought in the catering, right, for lunch at one in the morning. And I was on day like, shoot, I don't know, like 17 20. or something with no food. And it just smelled so good. <laughs> smelled so good. And I was like, Jason, can I, can I go outside just like 30 minutes while you guys eat? And he said, sorry, man, we're on lockdown. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, all right, I'll just work on my lines. Um, but that is better than almost any other day anywhere else. And just being on set is the best place to be. And we were shooting the last sequence on the rooftop. That was the last thing we were shooting. I just have to say this. And Ian, you know, is a bartender and he just bought a little water bottle of Fireball. And Fireball became the official drink of the movie. And then like Jason was just like, all right, I guess I'll take a shot. And I was just watching. I was just like watching from like the other side of the rooftop. And then he got so wasted on like, that, on on like this, on this much. And, they, and the last one, he's like, all right, guys, let's do this. And action, bitches. And they were like in this intimate, like, <laughs> you know, scene. And I'm just like, I, that is hilarious. <laughs> I'm very happy with the way the film looks visually. I'm very happy with how, how we shot it. And, uh, you know, and we used like modern equipment, but we also used like really old, cool vintage lenses. And so, and I think that that sort of reflects nicely with the film as well. So, so again, uh, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of, I have a lot of friends on the technical side. A shout out to Burns and Sawyer too, out there. Um, and um, uh, I just think that, um, you know, you know, when you make films, you have to understand the technical side, the artistic side. That's what makes films fun. You get to play with equipment, but you also have to, you know, you hopefully deal with humans as well. We, we actually had a lot of trouble shooting. Uh, we were actually shut down. The, their main location, we put all this energy and effort and assets into this one location. And the third day, we were kicked out of that location because neighbors complained. Awful. It's really hard shooting in LA. And also, you know, it's interesting. It looks like a one room type of film, but it's really not. I mean, Lauren's bathroom is actually a studio. And then the corridor is another location. And there's actually three or four different locations. The sushi like goes from like Anaheim to Los Angeles to <laughs> West Hollywood, like in one little circular unit. What was really amazing was the people that I was working with. I mean, I remember, I, I mean, I was talking to my wife like the third day and I'm like, I don't think I'm gonna be able to finish this. You know, I was upstairs like trying to order a falafel at the falafel palace thing place up there and I ordered it and I said, you know, like I'm vegan, don't put any, you know, whatever yogurt on it. They put it on yogurt on it. I'm like, I can't even order a falafel. How am I going to finish this movie? So, so, so again, again, um, the, it, it's, it wasn't just only about me. What, what was really, really inspiring was it was about us. And, and we made a better film. I can't speak more highly about all these people here standing here in front of me because everyone made the film better. I wouldn't be able to make it myself. And um, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm thrilled to know all these people.